What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. As always, it's your boy Nick. We're getting right back into the team outlooks. Gonna wrap up the AFC North today, starting off with the Baltimore Ravens. If you missed the Steelers, if you missed the Browns, go check it on my channels or probably the last two or one of the last videos that I posted. So go check those out first before we dive into the Ravens. All right, so we'll kick it off with Joe Flacco. You know, for the amount of pass attempts that he gets and the passing volume he gets, it's absurd how little fantasy points he puts up, right? He led the NFL in pass attempts last year with 673. Still managed to finish as quarterback 20 in fantasy, 30th ranked in fantasy points per drop back. So his ADP right now is quarterback 23. Very possibly returns value there, but he's not going to be anything more than a quarterback two, someone that you might throw in in two QB leagues. So you're not drafting uh, Flacco this year, especially with unproven weapons around him. The news broke last night about him hurting his back. Reports around around the team are saying it's not very serious. He's not expected to miss more than like, they're going to they're gonna leave him to rest for like one week, two weeks tops, see how he feels after that. But he's not expected to miss a lot of the preseason. So I'm not worried about that at all. All right. So when you look at the weapons around Flacco, right? It's one of those situations where like, a lot of people are probably just going to stay away from the whole situation altogether, right? Because it's not like a Brady or a Breeze or anything like that where you're like, oh, there's too many good options that I don't know who's going to, you know, who's actually going to do well. So I'm just going to kind of stay away. It's more like you don't know if anyone's going to do good. So you stay away from the situation. But the Ravens as a whole have 345 unaccounted targets. Last year, there was 345 targets of players that are not on the team anymore. So there's a ton of opportunity in this offense. So I don't think it's one where you should completely stay away from and have, you know, all the weapons out of your radar. First up, you know, we'll talk about how they lost Dennis Pitta, Steve Smith, Kyle Juszczyk, Kamar Aiken, all guys that left, right? Leaves us with Jeremy Macklin. Gets cut from the Chiefs, surprisingly, signs with Baltimore. There's no other way to put it. He had a terrible year, but he's just He's 29 years old. He's got a few years left. He was plagued with injuries last year. And I'm going to say a lot. I'll, that's that's a majority of the reason he did so poorly, right? He produced very well, very consistently for a few years running. And then it did last year when he was dealing with concussions, leg injuries, that kind of stuff. So I'm willing to chalk last year up as a fluke. I'm not saying he's going to be the receiver he once was. But in this offense, there's so much opportunity and so much upside for him to be a really big PPR play that I like Macklin this year. You know, when you look at it, he was already like a boring player, a high floor, low ceiling kind of guy. So he, no one wanted to pick him even last year, the year prior to that. So now it's even harder for people to get on board with him after having a terrible 2016. Career lows in just about every receiving category. He played in just 12 games, 45 receiving yards per game, and found pay dirt twice. Two tutties on the year. Now you look at Macklin, and he's going off the board 81st overall, wide receiver 36. For a guy who's very likely going to see 100-plus targets in one of the highest passing offense, they've led the league in uh, pass attempts each of the last two seasons, or if not led, they've been top two in each of the past two seasons. So, so they throw the ball a ton in this offense. So Macklin's a good bet as probably their wide receiver one to see 100 plus target, 110, 115 targets. What's probably going to happen, right? They have Mike Wallace, Rashad Perriman, both legitimate deep threats, both really fast and burn by defenders. So those two guys are probably going to play on the outside. They let Macklin play on the inside in the slot. That should really open up the middle of the field for them, right? You have Dennis Pitta who led tight ends in receptions last year in the NFL gone. So there goes a ton of those dump off passes. Macklin, when you go back to 2015, played a lot of slot, right? He scored six of his eight touchdowns that year from the slot. I don't think it's going to be a tough transition. Uh, they have the OC Marty Morningweg was with Macklin in Philadelphia. So the two are reuniting. There should be chemistry. There should be uh, an easy transition for Macklin into the offense. Now he's being drafted as a wide receiver four, right? Wide receiver 36. So bottom floor wide receiver three and 12 teamers. Why does she have a four in 10-team in leagues? 
I think he has upside to be a wide receiver two for you. If not, nothing else, a high end to mid wide receiver three. So you're definitely getting va value where you're drafting Macklin just based on the opportunity. So we also have Mike Wallace, right? ADP of 116 overall wide receiver 46. His ADP, as soon as the Macklin signed, Mike, Wall Mike Wallace was like uh, being pretty hyped in the beginning of the, of the summer and then Macklin signs and then his ADP has been kind of just shooting up. Uh, but he's definitely an intriguing late round wide out. We all know about Joe Flacco's arm. I'm not a believer in that shit being a, even close to a storyline anymore about how his big arm matches up great with deep receivers because it just doesn't really happen that well in this offense. But as per Evan Silva, Mike Wallace has finished as a top 30 fantasy wide receiver in seven of his eight seasons. That's impressive. So he's been a wide receiver three in seven of eight seasons. I know he's kind of boomer bust with the big plays, of course, but you know, the numbers don't lie there. Uh, Wallace produced his best yards per reception in 2016 since 2011. So over the last five years, last year, 14.1 yards per reception was his highest total. So it, it shows that, you know, even though he's 31 years old, he's still got some, some left in the tank. Wallace had, last year he had five receptions of 40 plus yards, which was tied for seventh in the NFL. So he could still make those deep plays. What does concern me is, uh, you know, his lack of touchdowns. He scored four touchdowns last year, which is not like terrible for someone who doesn't relies more on deep plays, but he caught three of his four touchdowns in weeks one and two. So for the remaining 14 games, he only caught one touchdown. And he racked up a little over a thousand yards. So he had a thousand seventeen receiving yards. That is definitely a ceiling for him. He's not going to beat that out in, in Baltimore this year. So I'm not crazy about him. He doesn't have a high touchdown ceiling. His his yardage, we've definitely seen him hit that peak like he did last year with a thousand yards. But it's kind of uncertain how this wide receiver group is going to play itself out. So Wallace could be a surprising value. I'll probably own a share or two of him in in, in one or two of my leagues. Definitely a good best ball pick. Because we know Macklin and we know Rashad Perriman have suffered, you know, injuries over the last few years, and Wallace can step in and and see a lot of targets if that happens again. So speaking on Perriman, it's actually kind of sick how much I love this guy coming out of college at USF. I was all over him. He was like one of my top breakout candidates. I'm not afraid to admit that he was. I loved Perriman. I I got too caught up in the hype and too caught up in his measurables and shit. Four three speed, six two two twenty. He's Built like a prototypical number one, and he runs like, like a track star. But he missed his entire rookie season with PCL injuries. Last year, he actually played in all 16 games, but he was not good. He averaged 31 receiving yards a game. So it's probably time to cool the Jets on Paramount. He did average 15.1 yards per catch, which is something that you'll probably see throughout his career, or very high yards per catch rate, because he is a deep threat, if nothing else. Like I said, he's a free combination of size, size and speed. Lot to work on as an actual wide receiver, and in theory, him pairing up with Joe Flacco's arm should be a good thing, but we realistically haven't seen that work out too well. Um, I mean, reports out of Baltimore's camp have been really, really positive regarding Perriman. You know, it's possible he turns the corner and he surprises people in 2017, but I, I think where he's getting picked, he's getting picked after Wallace, after um, Jeremy Macklin. He's going wide receiver 53, 141st overall. He's a late round pick with some upside given that they have a lot of opportunity up for grabs, but I can't say that I really, uh... It's just vodka, don't worry. I can't say that I, I, I'm gonna wanna pick him in my later rounds, to be honest with you. And there's no other wide receivers on this team I think are even relevant to talk about, to be honest. But when we move over to the tight end position, like I said, surprisingly, I was shocked when I saw that Dennis Pitta led all tight ends in receptions last year. He had 116 targets. He's gone. So that leaves, you know, a lot of opportunity up for grabs. And they have a very, very easy uh, schedule in terms of fantasy tight ends. The Ravens depth chart. You got about 75 different tight ends on this roster. Benjamin Watson, Max Williams, Nick O'Boyle rules, Darren Waller and Crockett Gilmore. Who is the play here? It, it, for me, it's Benjamin Watson, right? He's old as shit. He's like 37 years old. I think he's the favorite to be the starter in 2017. He, he tore his Achilles last year, so he missed the entire season, which is like kind of heartbreaking because he had a really good 2016 with the Saints, uh, moves over to Baltimore, gets injured right away. And, uh, you know, you're expecting at least a good year, a productive year out of Watson. It sucks that he had to be injured, but... 
Nonetheless, he should be back and healthy this season. Uh, the rest of the group is, is just a combination of underperforming, mediocre talent, and injury history risk. You know, if you want to talk about punting the tight end position in deep leagues, do it, and you can grab Benjamin Watson at like tight end 30. He's getting, he's like undrafted, like pick 260. If nothing else, if he wins that starting job, he should see like 60 to 75 targets there. So much opportunity up for grab, especially those shots over the middle. We saw him have success with Breeze. So you, you could do worse than Benjamin Watson, I guess. Um, but I'm not banking on any of these guys to make a big impact this year. Now, when we get to the running backs, uh, I literally just put out a video yesterday about Kenneth Dixon's injury and how he's out for the season. So I broke down Danny Woodhead, Terrence West, those guys, like in depth pretty much. So I'm gonna link that right here, or here, wherever it pops up on YouTube, so I don't have to say the exact same thing again here. So if you wanna know the Ravens backfield situation right now and what I think about it, just watch that video, because I always end these Team Alex with running backs anyway, so it would be the last thing I talk about. Also, right now it's Thursday. I'm filming this on Thursday, and this video is not coming out till Tuesday. So it's possible between now and Tuesday that the Ravens make a move on the running back situation, and if that's the case, uh, if they sign a new free agent after Bobby Rainey or they trade for like Carlos Hyde or something like that, I will post a comment down below and I'll pin it to the top of my comment section. So I'll get more into my thoughts on whoever it is that they trade or move for if you're interested in that. So that'll be below. And again, I don't want to get into the running backs because I already covered that. So watch that video. And that's going to wrap up the Ravens outlook. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, just scroll down a tiny bit, hit that thumbs up button. It's the one that looks like that. And uh, thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate it. As always, I want to end with a question. So, out of the receivers on the Ravens, who do you like to score the most points in a standard league? Not half point PPR, not full PPR, but standard. So I would say it's easily Macklin if it's any sort of PPR, but it might change things up because Perriman and Wallace are deep threats, so that's different for standard. But yeah, let me hear your opinion. Standard league, who are you taking out of those three wide receivers? Go follow me on Twitter. It's right there. Go check out the blog, go check out all that shit, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode.